Hi everybody, I'm Sam Benzala, and as Managing Director of Africa Burns Creative Projects, I stand behind the team that stands behind the community that brings you the Africa Burn event. Uh, this is an unusual story for me to tell in this environment because we didn't build a community to support a business, we built a business to support a community. So it's going to be a little bit more touchy-feely, but here we go. So who here has been to Africa Burn or heard the stories? Oh, <laughs> yes, quite a lot of you. That's great. And where's my clicker? So for those of you who've been, you'll know, and for those of you who've heard the stories, you'll know that Africa Burn is crazy, mutant vehicles spewing flames, it's soaring sculptures bursting into flames, it's performance artists possibly involving uh, flames <laughs> and planes, it's outrageous costume, parading along the binacring, dancing in the dust, moments of stillness, moments of intimacy, getting lost in the moment, in the crowd, finding yourself. It's whatever you want to make it and wherever the community takes it. It's not a finished product you buy access to. It's a process you buy into, designed around an idea. Because people connect around ideas. And the idea behind Africa Burn, right at the heart of this experiment in co-creative community building, is that we're all in this together, and together we can invent the world anew. At its very best iteration, Africa Burn is a change agent in a world that urgently needs a shift away from the dominant paradigm that prioritizes profit and product over people and planet. And in a country like ours, where the social fabric has been systematically ripped apart by careful design, Finding ways to connect and rebuild in healthy community is not just imperative, it's a moral obligation. Which is a lofty aim. But you have to start somewhere and you may as well aim high. And you might as well have fun while you're at it. Because we humans are social animals, hardwired to play. So Africa Burn invites you to reframe the way you engage with yourself and in community to connect on a deeply gratifying human level with the people and the environment around you. And to get down and dirty with, or step up and celebrate what it means to be you. And one of the most amazing things about the Burn community is that it's actually incredibly diverse. We're not a bunch of people united around a common thing that we all enjoy. We're a bunch of people ignited by an idea that resonates with us. We span generations, demographics, LSMs, skill sets, and a host of special interests. And it's this incredible diversity and this universal accessibility that it spawns, that is the inherent potency in Africa Burn, and that underpins a flourishing global burn community. Our digital community currently sits at around 100,000 across two main Facebook pages, and alongside these are dozens and dozens of smaller groups aligning around their particular affinity within the broader community self-seeding, self-organizing, self-sustaining, and self-regulating. And each of these affinity groups is a point of connection that people can hook into, each one a gateway, providing opportunity for engagement, a way to deepen or broaden your participation in the community, each group a vector for personal agency, helping shape a community as a whole. It's a model designed around the catalytic power of collectivism. Designed not to generate currency, but energy, a current. Not to control it, but to harness it and channel it. It's made by many. It's open source, it's participatory, it's peer-driven. Like electricity, much more powerful when it surges. And the annual Africa Burn Creative Expression Festival is like a thousand, jolt, a thousand volt jolt to the system, a defibrillator waking us up. Everything we do as an organization is designed to build and support community. And we do this by creating space for it. We create a city. We're a civic. For the short time that it exists, Tanqua Town is one of the larger human settlements in the Northern Cape. In essence, it's a blank canvas onto which the community project their offerings. 
We provide the basic framework and the community fills it, co-creating the experience by gifting to the people of Tanqua Town the thing they want to share. This is Tanqua Town 2019. Roughly two kilometers from end to end and about 500 meters across the Binacrin, which is that circle that's sort of half enclosed there. And all those dots in the middle, they represent acts of creativity gifted by our community. Artworks, performance pieces, sound installations, and the city of art and generosity is filled with magic and splendor. From the sublime, this is the moment, built in Russia by a group of people in their late 20s, early 30s, and they shipped it over and assembled it, spending weeks in the desert. And when you came across this thing in the middle of the desert, it was absolutely astonishing, emerging from the desert floor in a kind of organic way. And then you'd find the staircase and you'd walk up, and inside, a beautiful, very slick, lounge space and you could have your moment there either with an absolute stranger or with your best friend. Of course there's also the ridiculous like being woken up at dawn every morning by an anvil blasting. There's stuff that will tickle your fancy like the purple spanking booth where you can choose your punishment and there's stuff that will blow your hair back. It starts with the simplest of ideas, of pooling resources in your friend group. I'll bring a stretchy, you've got six bean bags, you've got a couch, someone's got bunting, someone else has fairy lights, and the next thing you know, collectively, you have a lecker, comfortable social space. And then maybe your friend Dave is an amateur astrologer, or astronomer, so he brings his telescope along. And the two of you are watching Venus rise one evening when a couple walk past on their way to the Binacring and they stop to ask what you're looking at. And the next thing you know, a small crowd has gathered and Dave is explaining the magic of the dog star to 20 people who are now eating popcorn that the neighbors across the way came to bring you. This is the social alchemy that happens out there. And the creative projects are powerful vectors for this kind of social collaboration physical manifestations of the personal connections that are being forged in the process of actualizing a project. Some of these are communication platforms. This is Burning Mail, one of our longest standing creative collectives. Every year they print around 5,000 postcards of pictures from previous burns. And uh, you go, you write your message, maybe you're gonna send it to someone who you're missing at the time and couldn't come to the burn with you, Maybe you just want to invite your friend who's staying across the Binacring on the other side at Fourish to come for dinner. Burning Mail will deliver it. It's pretty incredible. In fact, they post the postcards that are leaving Tanqua Town at the waterfront post office here. And Jacques, the post office manager, <laughs> it knocks his socks off every year. It's pretty cool. Uh, some of these are service offerings. You can get lost mind insurance. You can get a massage. You can learn about the local flora and fauna. Lots of them are good, clean fun. Some of them are pretty dodgy. <laughs> Some of them have something to say. Subterrafuge, for instance, is the artist's statement against fracking in the Karoo, visually representing above ground the scale of the disruption below. And what's interesting about uh, Subterrafuge, just a little side story, is that the artist behind it, a guy called Nathan Honey, he is a creative person, he is an artist, but he's, he's a jeweler by profession. And that's deeply creative, but on a macro scale, micro scale. And uh, he has ended up, with, through his time with Africa Burn, scaling up significantly. He's now one of our most prolific large-scale sculpture contributors, and Subterrafuge is the largest piece that's been built there so far at over 18 meters. What's also great about Nathan is that he uh, has roots in Sutherland, which is a small town in the Northern Cape, and he's used his projects at Africa Burn as a skills development platform for the community there. 
Lots of them are performance related, and uh, some of these have messages too. This is Air Nirvana welcoming you aboard, inviting you to pack your emotional baggage under the seat back in front of you, and to stow your ego securely in the overhead compartment. But please be careful when opening it again, as things may have shifted. <laughs> As a team, we look for points of collaboration within the community and help make the connection, pulling the fibers together. Here's a guy who's a graffiti artist looking for a surface he wants to paint. Over here, you've got a petrol head metal worker who's absolutely amped to build a custom stretch beetle. Connect them, and you get this beauty, Bugalux, something more than either creator could have achieved independently. And you get relationship a point of connection born of creative freedom and forged in collective effort. Here's Subterrafuge again. Beautiful, inspiring. Particularly inspiring at night with this guy's balloon chain arced over it when the LEDs come on and the night sky is lit. And it inspired this guy to aerial antics, which of course also inspired the medics to get the ambulance there just in case. <laughs> and this guy to video map his art onto it. Layers of beauty, with each layer built on direct personal interaction, the building blocks of relationship, which is the heart of community. Multiple points of connection. And then we release it. This works because the desire to create and generate is innate in all of us. As entrepreneurs, you're responding to that same innate impulse to do, to make, to build. And because as social animals, all of us feel a deep need for connectedness, not just to one another, but also to something that is bigger than ourselves. And in this fertile, generative, hyper-connective environment, you get to experience levels of personal freedom, levels of connection, levels of challenge, and levels of agency that are not ordinarily within easy reach. The creative freedom is what is so inspiring about this community. Because in a place that is so generative and so uh, abundant, you are able to take risks. You feel like you should. This, for instance, Ichtrasil, the tree of life, looks nothing like it was originally intended to. Nick Davies' original design was a 32 meter high baobab that she was gonna build alone. Not a chance. So she applied her creative thinking to this process and found a Danish funding body that uh, has a specific mandate to fund projects with a high likelihood of failure. How epic is that? <laughs> and through this funding body, she got access to a community of Danish and Swedish and Norwegian makers who came out and spent two months in the desert co-creating this piece. That looks nothing like her original concept, but the process was the point. And the, and the artwork is a spectacular success absolutely spectacular. In fact, it was the first and only to date piece in Tangpa Town that is completely wheelchair accessible with a ramp that ran from the bottom all the way up to the top, which was an incredibly generous act of radical inclusion. Another little story about this, the guy who did the lighting uh, jumped on a plane from Switzerland. He left a white collar job in finance, I think, uh, to come and participate in this project. And when, he, when his ride picked him up at the airport, uh, this guy handed him a, bat a batch of lights and went, figure it out, you're the lighting guy. <laughs> Thomas learned how to do lighting on this project. And he has gone on to do lighting on numerous projects for Africa Burn and has had a major lifestyle, life-changing shift, left his job in corporate and now is a light artist globally recognized. So all of this happened in 2017, uh, which was a good year creatively, but it was an interesting year for Africa Burn. Measured in terms of success, the standard markers, it could be considered our best year. Africa Burn was featuring on best festival and things to do before you die lists all over the world. Huge collectives centered around EDM were bringing their thing to the desert with stellar DJ lineups. 
We capped ourselves at 14,000 tickets. The frenzy for the people who couldn't buy was desperate. This was around 30% growth, and it generated close on 20% in surplus for us. Excellent. Or not. <laughs> because it had a very near catastrophic effect on the integrity of the Africa Burn project. We'd fallen victim to the hype that had proliferated around a narrative that was an easy sell for media, but wasn't true to our purpose. And in reality, despite some truly epic art, life in Tanka Town was a hollow imitation of itself, with the party overly dominating the Benekrin, and the delicate balance between active participants and passive spectators totally out of whack. The team left the desert that year feeling demoralized and disillusioned, and the core community left Tanka Town feeling disappointed and concerned. Facebook exploded. We knew these were legitimate concerns. We knew we had to listen and respond. We knew we had to course correct, and we figured out some pretty elegant, simple interventions that would help support shifting things. But the thing that was so gratifying was that the community took responsibility too. They understood their agency in the space, and they used it to voice their distress, to share their concerns, to share their solutions and suggestions, and to drive collaboration around the kind of experience they'd felt missing from the Tango Town landscape which is absolutely amazing. The thing that makes it so rewarding to be part of this community is the level of challenge. Because Africa Bird is not designed to be easy, it's designed to challenge you. The environment itself is physically challenging. It's hot, it's dry, it's dusty, big winds blow through, it can get to single digits in the night, and if a big rain comes, as it did in 2012, the site can flood. The physical discomfort rubs up against you and makes everything that little bit harder. And you can find yourself tackling something that you imagine will be within your abilities and your comfort zone, and then find yourself outside of both. But you dig deep, you stretch yourself, and you rise to the challenge anyway. And the people around you pull in to help. They'll help you hold onto your tent poles in the wind, they'll pull your tent out of the riverbed, They'll help you rebuild your sculpture after the storm blew it over. And the sense of being in it together is a very powerful leveler and a unifying force. You had fun, for sure, but you had difficulties, and in fact, it was quite hard. Maybe it even hurt a bit. But it was incredibly fulfilling. And it makes a great story. And it's the storytelling that is the driving force behind the growth of the Africa Burn community. Because if you've got a resonant idea, your story will tell itself. Stories of Burning Man lit the first fires of imagination that brought Africa Burn to life. In its genesis phase, it was storytelling that spread that message of this project. Public speaking to anyone who would listen. Institutions, educational bodies, community groups, special interest groups, friend groups, anywhere it seemed it might resonate. Those who heard the story were curious. The 800 to 1,000 or so who followed their curiosity and came to the first iteration of Africa Burn became storytellers themselves. And so the story proliferates. And the trick is to keep telling your story in words and images and action and to drive a narrative that stays true to your own intentions, to stay curious about your story. It's alive and evolving and the narrative threads are being woven by your community What's the story now? What's the story here? What's your story? That's how you invite people into community, a resonant message and a great story. That's how you build it, and they will come. Thank you.